Hey guys, Martin here from Mattress Clarity. So May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and whether you know it or not, your sleep has a big effect on your mental health. This has been a tough year for all of us, and I think specifically for college students. It's already a stressful four years made even more stressful by the pandemic and the ensuing lockdowns. With that in mind, I wanna to talk to an expert on sleep and also mental health, Dr. Steve Fogelman, a personal friend of mine. I'm super excited to talk to him. Let's hop in right now. Dr. Steve Fogelman, so awesome to see you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm so happy to be here. So uh, for our viewers out there, I have known Dr. Fogelman for almost tw 12 years now. Um, and interesting to be talking about you, the subject with you today, because when you met me, I was at one of the most anxious times in my life, which was grad school. Um, and so now that you are a licensed psychologist and have spoken with many college students, um, you're a great person to talk to, I think, about the connection between sleep, stress, especially for college students. And so first question, I think, generally is what is the connection between stress and sleep, sleep and stress, especially as it pertains to college students? Yeah, no, it's a huge topic and it definitely comes up all the time in my job seeing college students. Um, but it's something that I've also personally experienced with you. I really appreciate, like, one of the things I love about you, Martin, is you are so open and talking about your experiences with mental health. And I think that there needs to be so much more of that. And so I'll follow your lead and say, when I was in school, when I was a student, undergrad, grad, anxiety, stress, sleep issues, I experienced it all the time myself. Um, but I think the big thing that I notice is, regardless of whatever it is that folks are coming in to say therapy for, or maybe an experience they're having in their life with school stress, life stress, it's inevitable and so understandable that sleep is gonna be impacted. Um, there are such direct correlations and associations between how we're feeling during the day and how that affects us when we're asleep or struggling to get to sleep. And, and for specifically college students, and, and, and we spoke earlier that, um, you have, you have uh, had patients who were in college or in grad school. Um, specifically, um, even off of, obviously, we both have our own experiences, as you said, and again, I appreciate your candor as well. Um, how, how has um, it affected them overall, do you think, and so generally of things you've heard? Yeah, I think that down to the practical for folks who are coming into college for the first time, being in a new environment, getting away from home, that in and of itself is gonna upend not only like when we're awake, how we're feeling, but our sleep schedule. Schedule and consistency, that's key to anybody's ability to get a good sleep. And so that is a huge impact right there. Um, the thing that's really on my right mind right now is this past year with the pandemic, um, that a lot of college students weren't physically on campus and doing college, whether that's starting out or they have been in college for a couple of years that for college students, it's so tough having an unstructured schedule to begin with, because again, you think if one of the key things to getting healthy uh, sleep and having good hygiene is consistency, having an upended schedule, like having a schedule that you have to make on your own, classes in the morning, evening, all in between, it throws that off. But then a pandemic comes along, it's harder for any of us to have set firm boundaries between work and life and sleep, school, sleep, all of that stuff is blurred. It throws off the consistency that much more. Absolutely. And, you know, I've struggled with sleep myself, you know, at, at age 37 uh, this year, well out of school. Um, but I think everyone's schedules have been affected. Um, and, and not just time schedules, it feel like, but just the normal, your normal routine. Of, of the day. You may wake up at the same time, but just the way that your day kind of flows and the things that you used to kind of count on for regularity are, are no longer there. Um, I, I, I wonder if for college students too, I mean, um, they're missing certain outlets as well, right? I mean, like I, I imagine, I mean, for you and me in graduate school, like friendship and, and <laughs> community is so important. Like face-to-face -face community is so important. I mean, would you say that also plays into it as well? Yes, no, for sure, because um, one of the things that helps us feel human and like ourselves is getting to see our people and getting outside too, like in the sunshine and stuff. And that 
without a structure, without motivation to get out of our spaces, like our dorm room, our apartment, whatever, um, to see people or to get out in the sun, um, it just throws everything off. And we're not able to feel as good. We're not able to remember like how good it feels to even just spend a little bit of time with somebody that we care about or who cares about us. Um, yeah. And you're so right. And I think off of that as well, something we spoke about before um, was how, I mean, how hard it is to have good sleep hygiene um, during a pandemic. Because like you said, there's not a real separation between, I mean, for me, work and and, and home. Uh, I think, you know, for uh, people who are in their, you know, late teens and early 20s who are in college and they're not getting a normal college experience. They're either at their parents' house or an apartment. And they're working out of their bedroom. And you know, I've read numerous studies as well about your your bedroom should be a place for sleep, and that's it. And would you agree that's kind of part of it as well? People are working in these places that are not conducive. You're basically making your sleep space a workspace as well. No, I really appreciate you bringing that up. That's been huge. I mean, and again, like on a personal level, I was feeling that because a lot of the days I wasn't able to go into the office and work and I was working from home and I was starting to associate being at home with being stressed and having to work. So to that point of um, like the bed being a place to sleep, your room being a place to relax and to kind of drop your guard in the best of ways, I think of it as like, just the physical body. The body associates or should associate it best with the bed is a place to sleep. As soon as you hit that bed, like when we're sleeping well, you know the feeling like as soon as you hit the bed, it's like you get tired. You immediately want to fall asleep. It's something you look forward to. Yeah. But if what we're doing like pandemic or not is spending a lot of time working like you know, studying whatever it is that we're doing on the bed, the body starts to associate being on the bed with not only being awake, but being keyed up, being like on. Absolutely. You know, and that's something I've experienced definitely, definitely in grad school is I was, you know, on days where I wasn't in class, I was working out of my bed and I learned very quickly. I don't do that ever anymore. I, it's just a thing I learned years ago and I'm glad I did. Uh, it's such an important thing that you don't think about because it's comfortable. You know, you're on your bed. Oh, I want to be as most comfortable as possible. But you know, you said you're kind of making your bedroom a place where you should always be ready to respond to an email or be studying and always being in that that worker mode, right? It again, like we just start to think of it as like a place to be on. It, I kind of think of it too, taking a step back of. You know, like a lot of college students, they realize, they wait, I can't be in my room and study. I can't be in my room and pay attention. So we go to coffee shops, or libraries or whatever. And as soon as we enter that space, it's like, I can focus. You think about like, again, the association with physical spaces and our ability to turn on or off. If those lines get blurred and we start again, confusing like bed, bedroom is a place to beyond our body's not going to know what the heck to do no absolutely um i'd like to offer that to transition to something we talked about earlier with what are some signs you would say for a new college student someone who's been there for three years during the pandemic or after before the pandemic of that stress really is starting to affect their sleep but also their performance in school um because we both know that i think stress just comes along um, with school, it is a new situation, and and there is some sense of it, the newness, like you said. But what are some signs that it's kind of starting to go a little bit too far, and it's affecting your performance and your sleep? No, I love that you're asking too about what are the signs, because I think that whatever it is that we're experiencing, uh, mental health, um, whether it's stress, anxiety, depression, any of those experiences just having a hard time, um, that the sooner we pay attention to what's going on or the sooner we notice what's going on in ourselves, the more opportunity or flexibility we have to step in and help ourselves feel better. It's so much harder when things escalate or start spiraling to interrupt that process and make it better. So the signs are good to know for that reason. Again, the sooner you notice things, the more options you're gonna have. I think that um, for a lot of people, um, stress shows up behaviorally. Um, So they might notice 
in addition to like having trouble getting to sleep, um, like it, usually they might get to sleep within 10, 20 minutes. It takes them longer to fall asleep. That's a sign. Um, it's also a sign to wake up often in the middle of the night, like uh, maybe sweating, maybe feeling heat up. That's a sign. Change in appetite, like whether that's a decrease or an increase in appetite is a big one. Um, drinking more, uh, smoking more, you know, any kind of substance use change. If you're not one who usually drinks or smokes or consumes whatever in a certain amount um, and you notice a change, that's something. Um, those are a couple of behavioral kind of signs. I think there's a lot of signs too in the body, um, our, our thoughts and our mind and then emotions that I'd be happy to talk a little bit about as well. Oh yeah, please do. Physical signs, um, it, it depends on the person. Like, by the way, with these different areas, the physical, um, mental or cognitive, emotional, behavioral, like stress shows up in different ways depending on who we are or what's yeah. going on. So I think a lot of people do experience stress physically or anxiety physically. Um, and they might have muscle tension, like the tension in their chest or their neck or back. It doesn't feel good. And it's one of the things that if we don't pay attention to it and notice it early on, it's going to get worse. Um, headaches, um, you know, short and fast breathing, accelerated heart rate. Those are all physical signs of stress. Uh, fatigue is another big one. That feeling of like being physically worn down. Um, are there any other kind of physical signs that you notice or think about? Mother? Oh yeah. I mean, I think the, you know, to be honest, my number one is always in my chest. It's my diaphragm. And so that's, that's my barometer for how anxious or stressed I am to this, you know, to this day dealing with it. And I was like, Oh, and I, that's when I kind of like, when it gets to that point, I'm like, time to stop what you're doing and, and think about, you know, uh, as my therapist used to tell me, like be the detective, right. And like what changed in the last 10 minutes, what is causing this? Um, and like you said, noticing it early, um, is what I've learned through my many years of therapy, uh, as well. Um, and I think that, you know, definitely when I think the sleep thing again is something I experienced in grad school was like, yeah, I could, I could fall asleep pretty quickly cause I was so exhausted, but then 3am I'm up, you know, and it's, and it's always connected to like thing, you know, performance, like I have something due. And I know that's also for college students as well as you're doing more work than you did in high school. I mean, that most colleges, you know, like you are 10 times as much, um, and, and deeper kind of work as well. Yeah. No, the, um, the thing you said about you notice something coming up, wait, I got some like tension or stress in my chest, like time to do something about it. Like that's not the time to push through it or plow through it and keep your head down. Like as tempting as that is. Uh, I mean, I'm aware, like we're both guys in the room. That's something it's like guys are totally trained or socialized to do. It's like, no, nah, it's like, this is an opportunity to take care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I think the number one thing I've I've just learned is um, with as friends like you is just to be very open. You know, it makes things a lot easier. Obviously, that's been more difficult again during COVID because yeah, a phone call is great, but there's something about physical proximity. Um, again, like you said earlier about you know being in college and, and in your community, um, not having that is really difficult. Uh, I think it's been for everybody during COVID. Yeah, no, that brings up a good point too, like the, the point of college students and their experience of stress, anxiety, depression, things like that, a pandemic or not, but certainly with the pandemic is that one of the things too that helps us notice that we're stressed um, or anxious or whatever is getting feedback about it. Like the people who know us or love us or care about us, they're like, Hey, Steve, like, I noticed you seem kind of off or down or stressed lately, like not like yourself. That happens when we're putting ourselves out there that, you know, it's not like COVID-19 and we're able to actually see people. Um, that all goes out the window when we're going to college in general and we don't know as many people, like they don't know the signs or the warning signs to look for, out for in us. It's a huge barrier. It's like a huge challenge to step in sooner rather than later but that all escalated with the pandemic a absolutely um and I'd, i mean speaking of college students as well i'd wonder if you have any i mean we're we're coming up on the end of a school year um for a lot of uh 
a lot of college students, but obviously um, hope this can be helpful for people who are in school over the summer, but also for this coming fall um, as, as well, is what are just some tips, and we could talk specifically about sleep kind of after this, but when you're entering entering college, what would be some tips you'd give to someone to be very cognizant of their mental health? Because to be prepared, um, to know that even someone who's never dealt with stress or anxiety before, it may pop up, right, during this time. Um, and what are some tips I'd say to help to prioritize? And that can be, you know, health related, sleep related, um, or just like thought process as well. Yeah, it's, that, um, that's got me thinking about, I think one of the things that gets in the way of people taking care of themselves and even just asking good questions, being curious about how they're doing is the guilt and shame stuff of if they notice something that is feeling off or that they were not feeling themselves. This idea of like in our society, it's totally there of a mental health thing. is like, oh, that's a failure on your part, that there's something wrong with you if you're feeling off or stressed or anxious or depressed. It's like, hang on a second. Like <laughs> you think about what college does to us. We're uprooted, like as awesome as it is and as cool as it is to go off to college, we're also like saying goodbye to our friends or family, like hometowns. Like it's, there's a lot of grief and loss in there too. It's like everything is upended. I don't care what the life transition is, how good or hard or whatever it is, like a transition is hard and it's inevitably and understandably going to bring up mental health things. I say all of that because it's not a you thing. It's just a human thing of change is not easy and holding that and acknowledging that helps you open yourself up to be like okay instead of looking at like me feeling off is a wrong or a failing on my end it's just something that happens I, that's so great i think something that i had to be very aware of in any transition period in my life especially after going through therapy is this is going to be a stressful month for me like that will be and to be aware of that and so again, not to have that knee jerk reaction of, of, like you said, shame, I think is the number one thing that I, I feel when it, you know, if the first time you feel it or when it comes back and I, I feel like I'm very lucky to have, you know, friends like you that we were <laughs> through school and after brutally open with each other about how we're feeling. And when you have that kind of just like quick being able to be like, nope, I'm, you know, how I'm, you know what I, who I am and you know, like why this is affecting me this way. You know, you had that kind of shorthand with people um, and it makes it a lot easier. And I love what you said too, is like, I, the more I've been honest about my anxiety, the more people, everyone deals with it. Everybody I've met. I rarely meet someone and some, someone who hasn't, I'm like, okay, that's interesting, but I don't believe you. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So if you meet people that feel like, like they never seem to have problems, like they might, you know, they may put up a good face, right? Um, and that's something I've had to learn as well. Or they may just be feeling good at that time. It doesn't mean that they've never experienced it or that they never will. Uh, and that, that piece about honesty and openness that you said, like that in terms of a tip or something that I'd keep in mind for folks going to college or in college already is that another thing that happens beyond knowing that everybody experiences stress when we're open, that that's something we realize is that when we're open, when we're talking about these things, it also, it's like opening the door, being inviting to the other person. It's like, it's okay to talk about this. And when we feel that and experience that directly, it's like, wait, the person in front of us is also, or in front of me is opening up because of what I shared or disclosed. That feels good. It's like, I'm doing some good here and I'm like getting connected. Absolutely. And I, I've often felt my stress and anxiety level go down when I open to someone and they open back up to me because it is that sense of, of, of community, but also of A, I'm not alone and B, I can go into helper mode too. You know, it takes me out of my own situation, right? And I can say, hey, you know, let's talk about that. And, it, and I think it can kind of get you out of that world. I, I get out of that whirlwind of anxiety when I'm like, oh, there's someone else outside of the situation. Um, that, that can help me as well. Yeah. Cause what anxiety and stress does, if we stay in that and get locked up in it, is it, it just narrows our world. It just closes everything in. And, um, whereas when we're open and honest and talking, like it opens things up. Absolutely. Um, I'd love to, um, off of that real quick, um, 
just, you know, speaking about sleep specifically, um, with sleep hygiene, we talked about, you know, making your bedroom a place for sleep. Um, what are some other steps that you uh, give to your patients or advice you give for prioritizing your sleep at any time, but especially during college? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause again, sleep, you know, even if insomnia or like sleep difficulty as in the main issue that somebody's coming in, I don't care what it is, like regardless of the issue, stress, anxiety, depression, like sleep is going to be affected. Um, so talk about sleep all the time and consistency. I always think of that as the important, like kind of building block with all of it, all of this, like, and again, thinking of college up ends, uh, all of that, the consistency, because the schedule is unscheduled. It's not structured um, that we've got to think about when do I want to go to sleep? When do I want to wake up? Mm. And the want part is key. Like we're going to move towards what we want to do. Think of it as something to look forward to. Like if you look forward to sleep, just like you look forward to anything, like you're going to be more likely to do it. And so real quick, I think it's worth talking about the benefits of sleep. That um, again, if we're keeping in mind, like this is something that's important for me, it's good for me, let's talk about the benefits. Like the benefits are beyond like thinking straighter, having like more access to like being creative or being sociable, being out there and confident and feeling true to yourself in that way. Um, it's going to bolster your immune system. You're not going to get a sick. Um, it's going to lower stress levels. You know, are, we're more likely to get keyed up and tense, distressed when we're sleeping less because our body's like always in emergency mode. It's always like in survival mode, like the fight, flight, freeze part of this. It's going to be more on when we're sleeping less. Um, our metabolism, it's going to be improved like physically. We're going to be able to move around a lot easier like all of those things like those are just some of the benefits like that's a lot of reason to look forward to getting a good night's sleep right there absolutely um and and that's great i think that we i mean here at mattress clarity we're all about sleep and this is so great to speak to an expert like you um about the the physical benefits again like i think we all know sleep is important like we have to do it but to I honestly understand when it's not prioritized or when it is disturbed uh, by anxiety or stress that it's just like a domino effect, right? In your life. And either way, when we start sleeping better and, and I know I gotta, I gotta come back to some of the tips and the pieces of sleep hygiene, but when that goes up, it's going to be like a positive feedback loop. It's going to build on itself. And the same is true when we're not getting good sleep consistently, consistently, it's going to go down. But um, yeah, consistency is number one. Um, this is kind of one that I always think is interesting and I wanna talk a little bit about this if it's okay. But yeah. it, this idea of if we're laying in bed, usually more than like 20 or so minutes and we're not falling asleep, or maybe we're sitting there laying in bed and we're getting more anxious. Um, the idea is to get out of bed. This is so weird when folks think about this or hear this the first time. It's like, wait a minute. I thought the idea was for me, if I'm focusing on getting good sleep, why should I get out of bed? <laughs> why would that be something that's like good to do? And it goes back to that idea of the body. If it associates being in bed with being awake, you think about it. If you're laying in bed, getting more worked up and stressed for 20 minutes or longer, your body's going to start to associate bed awake. And that's what we want to interrupt. That's that's so true. That's something I've dealt with my whole life, you know, is when something stressful is in my life, if I wake up before my alarm and I'm not ready to quite face the day yet, even if it's the morning, and I'll just still lie there. But the minute I get out of bed, I do feel better. Like, not 100%, but I can feel my anxiety dip. You know, I do that and I get in the shower or something, just like change like change my routine there for a second because you're right. I get, You get that, you said that narrowing feel. You know, and you're in that weird liminal state too. So you're just kind of in that like just full on anxiety mode and it's not, it's not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's exactly the kind of time where most of us, any of us get in our heads when we're sitting there, it's late at night. Why the heck can I fall asleep? Of course, we're going to get more keyed up about that. Um, and then, yeah, when you get out of bed, like 
don't get out of bed and like watch Fast and Furious or something that's gonna like key you up, but you wanna do something that's like gonna relax you, maybe take a bath, like read a super boring book, um, you know, like something that's gonna help you turn off in the best of ways. Yeah, that's great. And I do want our audience to know that you and I are both big Fast and the Furious fans. There's always a right time for Fast and the Furious, but it's not then. And I hate to say it because like you, like you said, there's always the right time, but this is maybe the one wrong time. <laughs> Dominic Toretto cannot, cannot help out in this situation. <laughs> as much as I want him to, he just can't. And I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, that's great. And I, I, um, I think that any other, any other last tips, um, for, uh, for sleep hygiene, especially for college students, um, that you can think of? College, I mean, it's tough because that's when a lot of people are, uh, using alcohol for the first time. I mean, alcohol on a couple of fronts makes getting sleep harder. I mean, even though, for a lot of folks, alcohol can feel soothing or calming, um, that it actually prevents us from getting good deep sleep, like the idea of REM sleep, where we dream and when our bodies like let go and all of that good quality sleep happens, alcohol is going to get in the way of that. We're going to stay in that kind of shallow, like not healthy sleep. Um, but also like on a practical level, we're going to have to get up and pee a lot, like a lot, yeah. a lot. And um, that's hard. So that, that's a thing when I work with college students a lot, like I mean, I'm here in Atlanta, like Tech, Emory, Morehouse, Georgia State, all these uh, Spellmen, like they're all here. Like that's something that comes up again and again. It's like, um, I like partying, I like being social, like, but I'm having a really hard time sleeping. Let's talk about that. And that's always in there. Yeah, that, that does seem to be, I mean, obviously goes along with the college experience and, and to a detrimental effect often um, over, up for many reasons. Um, I, I guess uh, I'd like to, to kind of conclude with, and this has been, again, so, inf and so informative and so thank you, Dr. Fogelman, is what are the signs that it is time to seek um, professional help, go to the um, counseling center at your college to seek out a... Uh, uh, licensed therapists like yourself, what what are the what are the, what are the signs and also the steps you should take to go about doing that? Yeah, no, that um, and I think again about like the pandemic. It, not only were folks experiencing like more and in, uh, intense levels of stress, anxiety, depression, like mood kinds of things, more intensely than feels like ever before, at least in our lifetimes, like it was harder to access therapists and therapy, like whether you're on a campus or not, like it, it was just harder to access. But to that generally of the question of when to go, I would say there is never a bad time to go. I don't care if you're just like, eh, it might be kind of cool to talk to a therapist, go do it. Like you're not gonna do any harm. You're actually gonna feel a lot better. It, you don't have to wait until things get severe. I think about when people go see medical doctors, most of the time they're like going when they're super sick, they're going when like their limbs barely hanging on. You, you don't have to wait to a mo moment of crisis to go. So that that's like the big thing I always tell folks, especially folks who've never been to a therapist before is you don't have to wait. And in fact, it's ideal if you don't wait, because again, there's more opportunity to step in and feel better sooner. Um, but the, the warning signs and the things to look out for I, again, I, I think it's always good to go back to the different camps of our emotions, our thoughts, our behaviors, like our body, those areas. Um, if you're noticing that over the period of time, usually of like two weeks is a good marker, two weeks go by and you are feeling not yourself if you're more keyed up or worked up, like in the body, if you're having chest tension or your heart rate's beating faster, more often than not in that two-week time frame, go see somebody. If you're withdrawing socially or you're not wanting to talk to people as much in that two-week time period, go talk to somebody. Um, same if there's appetite changes, um, substance use changes, sleep changes, going back to this topic, like any of that changes consistently more often than not in a couple of weeks, 
go talk to somebody. Emotions, like if you're feeling down, feeling intense, um, blue, talk to somebody. Pay attention um, on your own, but then of course it always helps if you open up and you, you're feeling safe enough to ask for feedback from somebody that knows you and you trust, like ask them about it, see if they've noticed any changes too. That's great. And, you know, I can speak from personal experience that therapy is the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, and it to be able to open up in that way, I still am in therapy. It, you know, it helps, it helps, helps even me out and keep me honest with myself um, about how I'm thinking. And uh, so thankful for uh, people like you, uh, Dr. Fogelman, who uh, work in this industry and make sure that um, we're all getting the best sleep possible and maybe the healthiest life possible as well. Oh, thank it, yeah. Therapy is like the best thing in the world. It's something that if you've never done it before, it can be scary and it's a huge risk. Um, but it's legally and ethically confidential. Like it's going to stay there. Uh, it's great for that reason, but it's also great because it always, it's good to reconnect with ourselves. Therapy. I think about it's like not just focusing on the hard stuff or the difficult stuff. It's about remembering like, wait a minute, I've got this strength or I've got like this skill. I totally forgot about it because I just got to college or I've been stressed out. Like it, it's good to remember that stuff too. So therapy is awesome. And I'm not just saying that because that's what I do. So yeah. Completely agree. And uh, again, thank you so much, Dr. Fogelman. This has been uh, informative, uh, fun, also, always awesome to see you. Um, any excuse to see you is great. And for our YouTube audience out there, our Mattress Clarity audience, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the comment section below.